Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we will take a look at some new Mauritius comprised content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled, We're going to honor your terms for our rental notice. Years ago, my husband and I had finally saved up enough for a down payment for a house, and we were preparing to leave our rental. I think the lease had expired, and we were on a month-to-month -month basis, but there are still regulations in our state regarding when we had to give notice. I talked to the property manager before our closing to see if there was any wiggle room on how much notice we had to give, since we didn't want to get the required notice only to have something fall through at closing, and then we'd be out of a place to live. We lived there for almost a decade and had always paid our rent on time and had otherwise been good tenants, so I thought they'd be flexible with our notice and move out dates. The manager said she would ask the owners, and in a day or so she called to say that she was sorry, but they will not be flexible at all. They won't prorate a partial month's tenancy, and we'd have to give a month's notice on the last day of the month or that may have been the first day of the month. It's been a while and I don't remember. We said that would be fine and we understood that he was under no obligation to accept our offer to give our one month's notice on any other date than the last day of the month. Fast forward to our closing date in September, where everything went smoothly, and we became homeowners. We waited until the last day of the month to give the manager our written notice and October's rent, she accepted it, and we planned to be out on the last day of October. Had the landlord accepted our offer, we would have moved our butts to get out of there immediately after closing, but since he wouldn't budge, we decided to take our time. The new place was about three miles from our apartment, and we decided that instead of hiring someone to move everything, we take a few boxes over every day and then hire movers during the last week to move the big heavy stuff. That worked out pretty well, as we had time to organize as we moved, and we saved some money by not having the movers pack and transport everything we owned. The owner had six units where we were as well as other properties around town. In the early part of October, one of our neighbors told us that the owner was redoing the floors in all of the units. He'd hired a crew to move furniture, remove the carpet and linoleum and replace it with pergo, or some other laminate flooring. It was quite a job, since most of us had lived there for years, and each unit was two floors and about 1,200 square feet. Right after we heard this from the neighbor, the manager came over and asked if they could have access to our unit now so that the flooring could be replaced by the crew. She said the owner wanted to have the unit ready for a new tenant on the 1st of November. We said that this would be impossible since we were in the process of moving and he can have access to our unit on the date he had insisted on since he wouldn't be flexible with our needs. We'd scheduled a professional cleaner to come in on October 31 and they'll be done by 5 p.m. so he can have access then. Had they accepted our offer, we would have been out of there about two weeks earlier and we would have been much more cooperative about letting the flooring crew in to redo the floors. The manager said the owner wasn't happy it sounded like he would lose some money since the unit wouldn't be ready on the first for new tenants and he'd have to get the flooring crew back but there really wasn't much he could do at this point next one is titled to a resident make the drop of shame and lose your contract this is a short story about being a good neighbor a homeowner association that actually isn't evil and a towing company that is this literally just concluded moments ago i live in like a little gated community thing with townhomes and stuff and a homeowner association. Nothing super fancy by any means, just a quiet little neighborhood. The way it works with parking and the crux of this story is that every resident has two spots assigned to their unit, and they're yours to do with as you see fit. Use them, leave them empty, let your neighbor use it, let guests use it, park straddling both spots, who cares, they're yours. It's been this way for many years with nary an issue. We have a towing company contracted to the homeowner association, now, our tow company is only here to be called at a residence or homeowner association's direct request to remove an unauthorized vehicle from their spot. The parking is numbered, but just to identify the spots saved for residents everyone gets to, as we don't have any numbered, assigned window stickers or anything that's serious. The towing contract is rarely used, and really even then, just as a last resort. We usually just talk to each other like good neighbors do if we have a parking or other issue. So, I get home this evening and right behind me comes a tow truck. The kind they use for stealth pulls where they lift up one axle and roll you on down the road about 20 seconds after arrival. As I get out of my car, 
I see them pulling a neighbor's car, who always parks diagonally in their two spots, due to a tight configuration and a corner spot, making it difficult to navigate even small cars and out while parking within the lines. Now again, it's their spots, so who cares? Literally nobody, that's who. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. You see, the couple that owns the car is a sweet little couple in their 60s. Some are retired and generally just nice, quiet people. It didn't seem likely to me that their car was being repossessed, and something about the tow truck driver and his either spotter or manager some random dude in a F-150 following him around on a radio just made me feel odd. Usually I'm a pretty non-confrontational person, but something about the whole situation made me act in an uncharacteristically assertive manner, and so I flagged down the driver as he was beginning to leave with the resident's car. I'll be G and he'll be TT for tow truck. G. Hey, are you pulling a repo or a resident out of their own spot? TT. I'm pulling a resident for parking in two spots. G. That's bullshit. I've lived here a decade and that's never been a thing. TT. Yeah, well it's in the contract. You should try reading it. G. No, I've literally talked to the homeowner association about exactly this and they have confirmed what you're towing them for is explicitly not a towable thing unless the resident themselves called it in, and I doubt they asked you to tow their own car. TT. Well, you should talk to them then because I'm leaving with it. G. Cool, see you in an hour. So, in comes the malicious compliance. In a stroke of righteous karma, the homeowner association rep who is responsible for the tow company contract of our complex got home less than five minutes after the tow truck left and I was out walking my dogs. I walked up to him, exchanged the usual pleasantries and relayed the situation as well as the fact that they had tagged at least three other vehicles in the immediate vicinity for future tows. He simply let out an exasperated dog, crap, and said he would get on it. I then knocked on the neighbor's door whose car got towed and informed them of the situation as it stood suggesting they also contact the homeowner association rep up the hill. They did so accordingly, and he confirmed that he was already in the process of handling it. We stood out front and chatted for a bit, and he went inside. I retreated to my front porch and waited for what I knew was coming. Twenty minutes later as I leaned against the wall out front, I hear the jingle jangle of victory coming back into the complex. The tow truck drops the car diagonally in both spots, just as he found it with a scowl on his face. As he leaves, we make eye contact, I grin. He gives me the finger as he leaves. I smile because he knows I won. The neighbor whose car was again parked came outside shortly thereafter, and we chatted again briefly. The homeowner association rep whose swift action ensured their car was back in the spot exactly one hour from the time it was towed came down to where we were chatting and apologized for the issue saying that the towing company has given them other problems recently and that with this he would be moving at next month's board, meeting to contract with a new company as of January 1. One that actually abides by what we pay them to do, which definitely isn't towing ourselves. In closing, be the good neighbor Mr. Rogers taught you to be. Next one is titled, Just Put a Little Bleach on It. My family had lived in this old, decrepit cesspit of an apartment complex for several number of years and were finally getting away. Now when I say this place was old, I mean mid-forties at youngest. The walls were paper thin, and the appliances, tiling and carpet were older than I am. However, at the time we'd moved in, it was all we could afford. Moving day was a breath of fresh air for us. We had plenty of help getting our heavier items out and had enough to rent a van for the day. As we moved stuff around, we noticed a big black mark on the carpet in the living room, where the TV stand had been, and several smaller marks around our bedrooms. We wrote them off as electrical burns for the first few hours. As we're finalizing our move, I notice one of the legs of the TV stand is warped from water damage. Now, per apartment lease, we had to clean out the place as best we could. All losses would be taken from our deposit. We carefully examined these spots again and were not surprised. It was all black molds. I'd even pointed out numerous places in the walls that were warped from water damage. We did a quick estimate. The carpets were older than 10 years old. Apartment laws here are tricky. Broken items that are less than 10 years old are replaced at the expense of the renter's deposit. Older than 10 years is at the complex's expense. From the looks of the carpet when we moved in, it was clear that it hadn't been replaced. These bastards were doing everything they could to squeeze every last second out of these old carpets, just to avoid having to pay out the nose to replace them. 
My mom then went to the front desk and warned them of the damage. The girl at the front desk couldn't have been older than 19. Her lack of knowledge was made further obvious by her lack of caring and her simple solution. Just spray some bleach on it, it won't kill you. Okay. We finished cleaning everywhere, scrubbing every surface wearing masks as we did so. In the event of more mold, we left those spots untouched until the last minute. A neighbor had come to say goodbye, so we had her as a witness. She watched as we dutifully sprayed each affected area with bleach. Did I mention the carpets we had were akin to the color of a brown eggshell? Not white. Not good for being bleached. As we watched, the color around the mold went a warped bluish white. The mold now stood out even further. We cleared out and my dad did the final walkthrough. The lady gave no indication that she knew of the mold. We finished up and got out of there. We drove back once to collect our deposit and could see in the windows of our old place. They were tearing out the carpet to put hardwood in. More molds could be seen beneath the carpet lining and on the floorboards. Next one is titled, My Mom vs. The Concert Pianist. My parents ran a small freelance business for music and commercial advertisement, a common thing back in the 90s. At the time my parents' business was going pretty well, so we owned an old-style brownstone on the Upper West Side of NY. We had some pretty great neighbors in the fact that we never bothered them our sound studio was downtown in a remodeled armory building and they never bothered us. Until our neighbor on the left was out of town for a bit and had his pianist friend house it. Now for those who don't know, and why brownstones are tough old beasts made with body-sized bricks from before the era of indoor electricity or heating, so they're pretty sound, cold, bomb-proof on the whole. Only you wouldn't know it to hear this man play on his bus-sized piano all hours of the day. My mom tried to be pretty reasonable with him. She works with musicians every day, understood they needed to practice, and sometimes their obliviousness can easily be confused for malice. This guy, though, was a prick. She offered a myriad of compromises. She tried giving in our schedules, as my parents both worked and I was in school, so at least a third of the day we'd be out of the house. She also offered to help soundproof his side of the wall, something she knew how to do correctly as we had done so in our own studio downtown, in spite of the fact that, that it was located in the basement floor of a retired military complex. Basically, a bunker mom didn't duck around when it came to being a good neighbor. He wouldn't budge. So, knowing full well that she couldn't report him for sound violations until after 9 p.m., she decided to play within the rules. Borrowing one of our Busine's six-foot amps, she pushed this thing up against the shared wall between us and piano prick. She got an electric wall timer set to turn off everything during nighttime hours and proceeded to put on Wannabe by the Spice Girls on Infinite Loop for the days straight. Did I mention this was the 90s? Anyway, the piano guy eventually found somewhere else to practice. Next one is titled, When you're on the other end of a malicious compliance. So, this isn't me maliciously complying to a request. It's my neighbor doing it in the worst possible way. 1. I got a new neighbor a few months ago, and after a few days I notice a weird smell coming from his apartment. It turns out that he liked to smoke weed using a hookup, and that smell spreads quite easily so me and another neighbor kindly told him not to do that in his apartment since it gets into our apartments as well. 2. Said and done, he started using his hookah in the stairwell instead, making it a whole lot worse for everyone. So we told him that he has to stop and that if he really, really feels the need to do it here he should do it outside, when no one else is around. 3. Said and done, he started using it down in the yard at nighttime so he didn't bother anyone. But he was kind of upset about not being able to use his hookah in the building, so he started throwing his burning coals on the grass. Now we were getting pretty upset with him and told him to knock it off or else we would have to tell our landlord and have him kicked out. So basically, we said that if another one of his coals starts a minor fire on the grass, we'd have his butt for it. We knew he was troubled, and we didn't want to bother him more than needed, but him starting fires was a bit over the line for us. 4. Said and ducking done, he stopped throwing the coals on the grass and started throwing them at people and dogs instead. One of them ended up burning most of a woman's hair and a dog god scorched on its butt. So, there you go. The mother of malicious compliances. He never once did anything but what we told him yet escalated the situation every time. And yes, if you're wondering, he was forced to move out right after he started attacking people. Last one is titled, My 82-year-old insane neighbor getting herself into criminal court. So, I moved into this place a year ago and loved it, until I met my neighbor. 
I'll skip the small things that I usually tell people to show what a horrible person she is, but I'll give a little bit of what she's done. She used me to drive her places and gave me stuff in return, and one time I said I couldn't, and she went nuts, a week later my security camera catching her stealing a bucket she gave me and throwing it in the dumpster. She also stole my mail, but I unfortunately was too stupid to tell the police in fear I was wrong. She's also incredibly nosy and told me she looked in the dumpster to see how much someone's shoes were. Enough of that, here's the compliance. Backstory Since a few old people live here and the sidewalks were getting uneven, the land were the majority replaced and yikes, right in front of my neighbor's lawn. The workers laid down wood that passed through her in my yard. A week later a person who lives here is walking on the wood, because the grass was very wet and muddy. My neighbor comes out screaming at her, calling her many names, and eventually pushing her three times. Police came the next day to question people who saw, and I told the truth. She also called the cop a witch. So she has to go to court over this, and sure enough I went, so did the landlord. It's all going well, until the judge suggests her take anger management. Now, I knew she wouldn't be able to be respectful, and I was right. She begins to yell at the judge. I don't need anger management, she yells, angrily. So, this quickly shows the judge what kind of person she is, eventually telling her she will have to go to senior court. She once again yells saying that she's not going, so the judge asks if she is sure, and she once again says yes. He told her she has criminal court, and everyone left when it was done. She now has 90 days to leave, and even worse, it's at least violation to have gone to criminal court, I think, or something similar. She's still here, she was hitting her walls a few days ago. Thanks for listening.